working on a small space here. This is the one I usually use here in my shop, but at the end of last winter, I plugged it in and some of the magic smoke got away. So we're going to open it up, hopefully, and see what's going on. They actually used triangular uh, security screws on this thing. Typically when a space heater starts to smoke, it's one of two things. Either there's a loose connection in there, and that's smoking, because space heaters typically draw a lot of current. A loose connection can go bad quickly. Secondly, and probably most likely here, is the electric motor for the fan seized up and so the windings got hot and started to smoke. Either way, let's hope it's not permanent damage. And that bit's not the best fit either. Another common reason for them to smoke, of course, is burning dust, but quite different from electrical smoke. And so I know I don't have a dust issue. It's got some even smaller ones on the side here. Hang tight while I try to come up with a clever way to get those out. Okay, clever method not found. I did try drilling out a bit to fit it, and it just tore it up. So we're now using the brute force method. Of course, the feet just have regular Phillips on them. Yeah, that might be good because it looks like those have to come out too. They did not want people inside this heater. weren't long enough to go in. Oh, 
are still hung up down here. There we go. Does have its share of dust in it. And the fan is not seized. be funny if it was just dust. Sure smelled like electrical burning there. That might be it right there. It's a little corroded. The insulation looks a little melted there. Definitely overdue for a cleaning. Uh, that thing couldn't even breathe through that. And you can see the end of the motor shaft there, so you can put a drop of oil in there. So it looks like it's got two heating elements. This one and this one. It's the second one that has the uh, corrosion on it. Yeah, both sides look burnt. And that is loose. Peel away the, the contacts. The little tabs that fold over onto the wire. This one doesn't look a lot better. Problem is that eyelet they used is also riveted to the frame which holds the end of the heating element. So if I drill out that rivet, it's going to unwind the heating element. I need to cut that off and put a new eyelet on it. 
Yeah, this must be the primary one, so it's got more hours on it. Because this is the uh, heat control switch here, so you can turn it on uh, high and low. So low probably just runs the one element, because both of these leads go into that switch where the line is. So yeah, on low, yeah, there's off, fan only, low heat and high heat. So low heat, this one will be running, and high heat, they'll both be running. This is a tip switch. It's a safety switch that modern uh, space heaters use. And uh, all it is is if you knock the heater over, the switch rolls back and breaks the contacts there, and so it, sh it powers the heater off. I wonder if I can cut that off and just clean that really well, and then just solder the wire right to the top of that eyelet, because it kind of looks like that's what they did here. question is, would this get hot enough to soften the solder when it's running? I'd imagine not, because then the wire itself would actually get cooked too. And that may be the way to go. Okay, I'll bring you back when I have some progress. So I want to try that, but I also want to get some compressed air and clean this mess up. The thing's filthy. I'll bring you back. Okay, it looks like that'll work. I cut those wires off, stripped them back, cut them back uh, past the burnt area, and I actually inserted them in the eyelet and soldered them in there and they're holding pretty tight so I think that's gonna work only negative is is these wires are a little fat compared to the original eyelet so sliding it in here and it's holder makes it a little tight right there That side's all right. I probably, probably should have just stripped the insulation back further on that side. That's why this side slid in. You can see where insulation is back to here. But it's in there. I think it'll be all right. How did this thing come apart? I guess that went... Yeah, because the fan's back there, so it's forcing air through here. Okay. Try to wipe that down a little more. I did take some compressed air to it, but... Dust is sticky. Gonna put a little drop in there. That's it.
heard at least one of those screws hitting the ground. There's the other two, okay. That's one of the back screws. Okay, I'm going to live dangerously and give this thing a start up on the bench. Not good. And there's smoke. I wonder if the fan is just dead. It did not spin. Moved. Problem is in the fan. Sounds like to me the bushings are gone in that thing. All that soldering work for nothing. I should have diagnosed it better. But when I saw it freewheeling, I assumed it was still good. The heating elements are working, so at least I didn't mess it up. See if that fan is even serviceable or not. Uh, 
Well, it's removable. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not as simple as pulling the wire nuts because I already tried earlier. These are soldered. They're twisted, soldered, and uh, wire nutted. Somebody did a, a very nice job on that assembly. So I'm just going to cut it out. Because at this point, this thing might be dead anyway. Doesn't smell burnt. Oops. That's the bushing. Oh, you know what happened? That's a retainer. No, yeah, but that wouldn't matter. Something's not right here, though. But as far as the bush in itself, there's no slop in there. That is an excellent fit. Doesn't look like orientation is a thing here. Here's the other side. So there's that retainer and the bushing is underneath that. So to assemble them the same, that means this would fit there and this would sit like that. I guess that's all right because that does not clip into place. Doesn't seem right. And a little thrust washer.
I don't much care for these kind of clips. They're those push on kind. I don't know what the name of them is. But they're a one way deal. You can reuse them, but that wasn't the intention. knock that burr off. So this bushing is firmly installed in that housing. This one's not. Yeah, the bushings themselves are very tight. Are these the same? No. Nope. So it seems to me that this thing spilled its guts and allowed the armature to move. Yeah, look how easy that popped out. If I can uh, push these ends out a little bit. Alright guys, did the fan come out of the wire end, or the other end? <laughs> I think it came out the opposite end, because I see these drag marks there. But I think I will look at the video to make sure, so I'll be right back. Okay, the wires were on the back, and that's what I thought. Good. Makes sense anyway, they'd probably interfere with the fan on the other end. Okay, so that goes in there.
Yeah, you see it's sprung now. Went on way too easy. But usually you can flatten those tabs out some and reuse them. Until eventually the, uh, the tabs break off. larger version of these horrible little things is what held our wagon wheels on when we were kids. Plenty of crushed fingers working on those. Sounds like the neighborhood dogs are having a block party. Everything's barking. Okay. This is really sketchy. Don't do this at home. It seemed to work. Realize I can't leave it on too long because the heating elements aren't getting the thermal cooling they need. So they're going to overheat. Tip switch worked. It did. <laughs> there we go. So that's all it was. The uh, retainer that held that bushing center popped off. So the armature wasn't sitting straight in the motor. working well. Cool. Or hot. Okay, so I'll find a more permanent way to patch that and be right back. 
Well, I hope not too much of that footage went off screen, but uh, wouldn't surprise me if it did. So I am doing the same thing that the factory did and just soldering these joints and then putting a crimp. What is that called? I mean, it's a wire net. No, they just call it a pigtail connector. I guess it's not a nut because there's no threads in it. So just soldering up and putting one of those on. So that back didn't need to come off for disassembly. It's just this outer frame that holds it in. It did need to come off anyhow to get that fan apart. But originally I could have left those in. cheating this is those triangular ones that are supposed to have that bit this little 1 8 flat fits on one side just fine it's driving them in so I shall use that do rather than try to save those original mounts I'm just going to reassemble and put a self tapper right in on each side of that test run before it goes together. Let's see that 
that's low, that's high. You can tell it's working just because it's dimming the lights. Be right back. I'm definitely cleaning this thing out. A little bit of body work. The Duracraft. Heat Furnace Plus. There's a date on it. That is very faint. Looks like 96. Seven, so July of '96. That'd be about right. This was a gift to me by my, from my grandparents, around that time. They had heard that this old house that I'm living in and still living in today is cold. It does get cold in here house was built in 45, 46, I forget which right now. And it's only heated by a wood stove. So they sent along this little heater to help out. since acquired larger and more efficient heaters, space heaters. This little guy still works for the shop here. Ask me how I know.
grandparents have since passed away. My grandfather actually made it up to 2016. He was almost 95 years old. Living in his home and still self-sustaining. I think he retired from driving uh, about a year before. Maybe two. Amazing guy. I got two different sizes. Uh, that's weird. Nothing fits this one. Huh. Overkill. how she looks. Put the feet back on. Good to go. Thanks for coming along with me on this uh, little different adventure fixing this Duracraft Heat Furnace Plus space heater. Thanks for watching.